Hey friends, welcome to the part 160. We are looking at some of the important questions. Again, this part is for members. See, in this question, you can pause, read it carefully. I will explain what happens in this question. First, the most important thing is they are firing a standard SQL. If they are firing a standard SQL, we don't want no SQL databases. Which one is a NoSQL database? This one. We don't want DynamoDB because it is a NoSQL database. So if you don't trust me, see this Amazon DynamoDB. This is a NoSQL databases. That means normal SQL queries you cannot fire. Okay, buddy, what else? It combines exabytes of data. What sort of data? Boss, what sort of data? Unstructured data. Semi, sorry, semi-structured and structured data. Semi-structured and structured. The moment I see data warehouse, the moment I see data warehouse, I always think about what? Redshift, it is your data warehouse on cloud. This is architecture, you can bring tens and tons of data. See, click stream, that means on the website, people are clicking web pages, you are capturing those click streams. It will be millions. Telemetry data, every second you are getting some data sets. It will be in millions. So that is why we are saying exabytes. This exabytes, Redshift can handle exabytes. Can it handle Structured, semi-structured, yes, structured. That's why you are able to fire SQL queries. Semi-structured, that is why you are able to fire SQL queries. Unstructured is not great. Redshift is not great with unstructured stuff. Okay, now you might ask, boss, why we are not choosing Aurora? Aurora is also a database, boss. Buddy, if I give you, I tell you that you have to go in a Formula 1 racing and you have two choices. You have to choose between Maruti Alto versus Ferrari. Which one will you choose? The purpose. Fit for purpose. Fit for purpose. Ferrari is born for racing. Okay, it has good engine. So that is why we are not choosing Aurora over Redshift because Redshift is born for this purpose for data warehouse and Aurora is not. Then why is Aurora used? It is used for high performance availability for MySQL, PostgreSQL. If you have PostgreSQL databases, then you can use Aurora. Did anybody tell you that I want to put MySQL or PostgreSQL? No. So we will not choose Aurora. So Aurora Paji, Aurora Paji, sorry, we cannot choose you. Now, what about Athena? Athena is not even a database. What is Athena? Athena is a serverless service. Serverless service. Why? So if you see this, analyze petabyte scale data. Petabyte is fine. We are talking about exabyte. Okay? Here, it lives with ease and flexibility. What it is being used for? It is used for firing query, interactive advanced analytics. If you have this use case against your data warehouses, against your data lakes, you can use this. What else you can do? You can do machine learning. So what happens? You have your data warehouses. Okay. Athena is not a warehouse. Athena is not a database. Athena is a query engine. It provides you a query engine just like Presto and etc. You can fire queries on data warehouses. So on Redshift also you can fire queries. You can fire queries on big data, ERP systems, etc. etc. And why? For machine learning purposes. Right hand side you see machine learning purposes, AI and BI and analytics. BI and analytics. On the right hand side you see this. So Athena is a query engine. It is not even a database. So Redshift would be our final answer. See, first thing, a company must compare the cost of running MySQL databases on EC2 instance. What happens is you have a big EC2 instance and you are putting a MySQL database here. This is your MySQL database. It looks like something else, but this is a database. Believe me, man, this is a database. And what we are doing, uh, they want to compare the cost of running MySQL databases on EC2. What is the other option? The other option is using RDS database. RDS is a relational database service. This you can use for MySQL and blah, blah, blah. So many other, other stuff you can use it for. See, when I'm giving a solution as an architect, I can choose both. I can choose one or the other. See, uh, both will work. But when we are saying I want to compare the cost of these two solutions, for simple, you have to go to the price calculator. This is a price calculator. Go here. You can create your estimates. Click this button, create your estimates. You can put the service. What are, What is the service in this case? Option 2. Option 2 says, I want to use RDS. See, if I click this estimate, I want to add a service. What will I do this with service? I want to search all services or specific services. I can make a selection. Which region? Okay. Then I'm selecting Ohio, East, West, etc. I have a plethora of regions that I can select here. Okay. Then I can find a service. What is the service we are looking for? We are looking for AWS RDS. Okay. Then I can go here and try to see and I can select the service and based on the service, it will give me the price for running these two solutions. So which solutions? This option one. This is the first one. I will put my SQL database on EC2 here, this box. And then option two, this is option two. I will directly choose RDV database. Which one would be cheaper? So pricing calculator is my answer. Budgets. Budget is just like you start your month. You are getting your salary. You are defining. Okay. This is my budget. 
I will spend this many dollars on utilities, this many dollars on groceries, etc. Okay. In this case, we are not creating budget. We don't know. It is just like you have decided to buy a house. You are doing a price uh, comparison. You are just at that stage. Budget is when you know that, okay, now I will uh, buy this house. I will allocate this many amount for renovation. I will allocate this many amount for, you know, uh, for furnishing and etc. So budget is wrong in this case. Now, there is a beautiful service called control tower. See, if you have multi-account AWS environment, you have different accounts. You want to control everything, govern everything at one place. You use control tower. It will set up and govern a secure multi-account AWS environment. You can set up well-architected accounts. You can automate the creation of AWS accounts and etc. You can enforce best practices and standards. Okay, It seamlessly integrates with third-party softwares also. But is it useful in this purpose? Will, you, will it tell you anything about cost? No, it is not going to tell you about price and cost. This is totally wrong. See, outpost is like outpost. You, what is your post? Your post is AWS. In military, people say you manage your post, you handle your post. What is th does that mean? That means we are on AWS. AWS is our post. When we say outpost, that means outside AWS, where on premises, where on premises. So if you want to run AWS services on premises, then you use this for a truly hybrid experience. Boss, is anybody talking about hybrid here? Hybrid cloud on premises? No, we are not talking about that thing. We are talking about price calculation. Outpost will not give you anything related to price, budgets, cost, anything, nothing of that sort. So we will lock our answer as price calculator. Move forward. So in this next portion, what is happening? You are migrating your workloads to AWS cloud. Okay, so this is AWS cloud, and here you are on premises. You are migrating your workloads to AWS cloud. What was what should the company do? They must retain full control of patch management of guest operating system full control guest operating system see whenever you think about guest operating system where do you put guest operating system on ec2 instances because that is the only place where you can or aws allows you to do that because that is not a managed service but other services like rds it is a managed service dynamodb managed service you will not be responsible for patching the operating system softwares okay so in this case ec2 would be our answer simply because ec2 gives you that option that you can choose an instance you can decide which operating system you want you would be responsible for patching the guest operating system lambda is a serverless service so what will lambda do it will it is a compute service it is if you don't want to use ec2 you can use lambda for small data transformations it only lasts for 15 minutes okay so but in this case, you will not get an opportunity to patch guest operating system. Lambda is a managed service. You don't even come to know what operating system is there and kind of it, it is all available for you directly. It's like a hotel. You go to the hotel and you order food. They, do, they, do you know which Atta they have used, which wheat floor they have used? Is it from Ashirwad or Ganesh and etc.? No, you don't even come to know that. Okay. Same where with serverless stuff, Lambda, or managed services stuff, like DynamoDB, Lambda, RDS, these are all managed services. That means you are booking a, a food delivery from a hotel. You are saying, I want Chinese noodles. Which company noodles you have used? From where did they get the vegetables? You have no clue. But on EC2, EC2 is like you are creating a kitchen of your own. That is why you are responsible for buying onions, for buying potatoes, for buying a branded wheat floor and so on. So you understood? This is a difference between EC2 option B is creating your own kitchen versus A, C and D is ordering from a restaurant. If you have not yet subscribed and if you have not started the cloud journey, this is your opportunity. Feel free to get onboarded. Become a member. Which member? Cloud Kernel, Cloud Ninja. Cloud Kernel, Cloud Ninja. You can see on this channel page the join button click the join button become the member uh, there is a very small subscription fees that you have to pay and then your journey starts you get access to a lot of different content which will help you with certifications now on these videos there are various comments a lot of people say hey you know what i'll pass these certifications i got a good amount of content from these videos playlists these are very helpful even if the uh, questions are not a direct ripoff, but whatever came there, they were able to clearly answer. Why? You know why? Because we are clearly teaching you how to decode, how to look for keywords in the question, 
how to read out the wrong options, how to arrive at the right answers based on the concepts, based on the concepts. So, buddy, have a nice day. Today is a weekend, Saturday. I hope you are enjoying your time. When you are enjoying your time, also keep aside some portion of the time for your building your skills. You are investing on yourself. So, build your skills. Invest time. Invest some money, but more about time. Okay. If you have time, all the information are available on the web, YouTube channels and so on. You can really make it big. 